हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम उमंग बारोट लेक्चरर इन मेकेनिकल डिपार्टमेंट आई एम फ्रॉम आत्मीय इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड साइंस डिप्लोमा स्टडीज आई केम फ्रॉम राजकोट डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इंजीनियरिंग मटेरियल्स व्हिच इज अ टॉपिक ऑफ बेसिक मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग एलिमेंट्स ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड द सब्जेक्ट कोड इज टू and today our topic is engineering materials now see being an engineering students we came across so many materials right we use so many materials we apply so many materials in our day to day life but we don't know the basic characteristic basic properties or generally we can't recognize or categorize this kind of material right but being a engineering student we should know that what are the different types of materials what are the basic properties of different materials and material which i am using as a engineering application or in a day to day life how i can categorize it or how i can identify it right so today first of all we will know that what is a material it is a matter a substance which possesses weight mass and volume right any substance which are, which is made from something or anything which is made from any substance that we call material in generally material has matter and it possesses mass and also material has its volume right this is the basic uh, definition we can say of any material now on onwards we will switch over to properties of material right we should know the different properties of material the first property of material is static strength it is generally defined as ability of the material to resist stress without failure when subjected to static loading right now any object made up of of any material if it is subject to tend to static loading if it can resist if it can withstand this load then we can say that material that object possess static strength and if apply load exceeds to the yield stress or we can say the allowable stress then the stress which generates within the object right that will occur a fracture right there will be a rupture in a particular object and that then we can say that the applied load exceeds the allowable stress as we know whenever we applied load to any object right there will be a stress within the object to resist that force now that load if it exceeds the allowable stress then there will be a fracture right so if static load exceeds the allowable stress there will be fracture and if static strength is good then that particular object will resist the static load and then we can say that object has a good static strength now dear students let us understand fatigue strength right it is the ability of the material to resist stress without failure when subjected to fatigue load now see there is basic difference between fatigue strength and static strength is a type of load in a static strength we see static loading and in fatigue strength we see fatigue load right now what is the difference between static load and fatigue load static load generally doesn't varies with time right whereas fatigue load varies with time fatigue load is a type of load which occur in a cyclic manner like for instance t is equal to 1 second its value is 1 newton then t is equal to 2 second it value is 2 newton t at 3 second it value may be 3 newton and after a one cycle there will be repetition of same cycle right so it is we can say a fatigue load is in a cyclic manner so if particular object withstand a cyclic load without failure then we can say the material has a good fatigue strength right so static strength and fatigue strength in both the cases object has to withstand static load and fatigue load difference is only in type of load but in both the both the cases object has, has to withstand a external applied load right so if i have to say a material or object made up up of any kind of material has a good static strength or good fatigue strength that particular object has to withstand a load right 
if it is a static load then i can say static strength is good and if it is a fatigue load then i can say fatigue strength is good so these two are the basic mechanical properties of any material right is static strength and fatigue strength now dear students let us understand elasticity this is the third property of any material definition says this is the property of material to regain its original shape after deformation when the external load or external force are removed now students as we know whenever there is a applied externally applied force on any object there may be some deformation and what we call deformation is deformation is a kind of change in shape size or in any dimension right if i applied force to any kind of object if i apply any kind of force right there may be a chance of deformation and deformation is nothing but a change in shape size and dimension right now see if i applied external force to any object and there is deformation that we can understand easily but what will happen after the removal of force what will have to happen after the removal of externally applied force right there may be two cases because there is already a deformation a first case may happen that in which we can regain its original shape and size right a object can regain its original shape and size that is the first case in second case object do not regain its original shape and size and stays on the deformate deformation right so if we consider a first case that after the removal of applied forces if that particular object regain its original shape and size then we can say that this particular object possess elasticity right so that is the definition of elasticity that if property of a material to regain its original shape after deformation when the external forces are removed so basically it is a phenomena it is a property of material when external forces are applied then if deformation occur and after the removal of forces object regain its original shape and size then we can say it is the elasticity now see all materials are plastic to some extent right generally all the materials when they are subjected to external force they are subjected to external load right they will show some type of some amount of elasticity right some amount of deformation but only two cases possible either they will regain its original shape and size size after the removal of externally applied force otherwise they will stay on the deformation after the removal of externally applied force right so we can say deformation happens in each and every case if sufficient amount of load is applied but what the difference is extent but degree varies right all the all the materials are plastic to some extent but the degrees are varies if i apply 10 newton of force in a metal and if i apply same amount of force same magnitude of force on a plastic material we can see the degree of deformation degree of change in shape and size will be different in both the cases there will be more deformation in plastic object and there will be lesser or there will be no any kind of deformation in particular metal object right this may happen so degree of change degree of deformation will, will vary from object to object or i can say degree of deformation will vary from material to material for example both mild steel and rubber are elastic material your example is given if i apply same am amount of force same magnitude magnitudinal force to both the material mild steel and rubber right we can easily see the degree of deformation is different in both the material so this is the basic phenomena of elasticity right now there is a diagram uh, basic uh, figure is shown below right here we can say we can see a object of rubber is shown here t at 0 second there is no any kind of load is applied now see at t is equal to t second external force is applied right we can say it is a compressible force it is a compressive force right so material goes under the deformation that particular 
object of rubber has now gone under the deformation we can see the total volume or total size of that rubber object is now changed now see rubber is a elastic material now after the removal of applied force rubber regain its original shape right so here we can easily see that this elasticity rubber possess right now we will switch over to plasticity this is associated with the permanent deformation of material when the stress level exceeds the yield point right here we can see particular object we have applied a external force now due to the external forces are applied there is a some amount of compression in particular object now see when the external forces are removed the object has not regained its original shape and size so we can easily say that this object this particular object is a plastic material and it has not regained its shape and size after the removal of material so this particular property which possess by material is a plasticity again this is associated with the permanent deformation right every material which is plastic or every material which possess plasticity always shows permanent deformation whenever we remove externally applied force and if it has undergone a deformation while applying the external force it will not regain its original shape and size provided that material when the stress level exceeds the yield point if we want to show or if we want to see a permanent deformation or if we want to achieve a plasticity in a material the applied force or the stress which is generated within the object should exceeds the level of yield point right so whenever he, whenever the applied force or whenever the due to applied force the stress which is generated within the object should be exceeded to the yield point right then and then we can see plasticity in the particular object now dear students let us switch over to ductility this is the property of material that enables it to be drawn out or elongated to an appreciable extent before rupture occurs the percentage of elongation or percentage of reduction in area before rupture of a test specimen is the measure of ductility lead copper aluminum mild steel are typical ductile materials now let us understand that what is the ductility basically is this is the property of material that enables to be drawn out or elongated as we have seen earlier all the material goes undergoes a deformation either it is elastic deformation either it is a plastic deformation but whatever the material which enables us to be drawn out uh, drawn out in a thin sheet or drawn we can it make us uh, capable to elongate right so every material which is uh, elastic or plastic cannot be elongated up to particular amount right so material which is ductile that material only can be elongated right and that particular phenomena is called ductility in material the percentage of elongation or percentage of reduction in area before rupture or a, of a test specimen is the measure of ductility so we can elongate it before the fracture rupture or we can compress it before the rupture or fracture right so that is the ductility here are few typical examples are given the material which possess ductility these are lead copper aluminum mild steel right now let us switch over to the this diagram here a particular object is shown we can see easily that a object is tensed right there are two external forces are applied right and we are stretching this particular object now students see we can easily see that material is now elongated right and in between at particular this portion we can see the deformation there is a change in shape and size right this is the elongation now wherever the material is ductile we can easily predict that particular material at what point it will fracture right so ductile material always show indication before fracture any material which is ductile any material which possess ductility will always shows some indication at a point of 
fracture at a point of rupture right for example if we stretch any rubber or any elastic material or any plastic material when we will stretch it belong over to its allowable stress point yield point right so we will easily predict by showing that by seeing that particular object that now this material this object will goes under fracture at what particular point right so ductile material always shows few indications before fracture and that is the main characteristic of any ductile material now we will see the brittleness this is opposite to ductility right it is a very opposite phenomena to the ductility brittle material shows little deformation before fracture as we see earlier the ductile material shows a greater amount of deformation before fracture at the point of fracture right but here in brittle material brittle material shows very little deformation or sometimes never shows any kind of deformation at the point of fracture and again failure occurs suddenly without any warning right there is a warning there is some amount of uh, some amount of indications in a ductile material but in a brittle material there is no any kind of indication there is no any kind of warning right and always brittle material suddenly comes under the fracture normally if the elongation is less than 5 percentage the material is considered to be brittle right in if in case there is a very small amount of elongation there is a small amount of deformation at the point of fracture and if that particular elongation is less than the 5 percentage of material then that material will be considered as a brittle as this is the main parameter to differentiate between brittleness and ductility right now there is there are some examples are given that is cast iron glass ceramics right these are the typical brittle materials okay so main difference we should know for, uh, between brittle material and ductile materials is, is only that brittle material never shows any indication or warning at the time of fracture or before uh, fracture why whereas ductile material always shows some indication some elongation at the point of fracture dear students we can easily uh, see brittle fracture here a piece of metal which is broken already we can see it right we can see the brittle fracture there is no